peace is something that I've been thinking about a lot lately, and especially in today's world. And I also see it as very integrally connected to my work in the classroom. Um, Emerson once said, nothing will give you peace but yourself. And then much later, about 1860, before the Civil War, in the years leading up to the Civil War, he said, the only real and lasting victories are those of peace and not of war. And it's interesting because I think that the first passage from Self-Reliance does speak to me as a very fundamental truth that in order to be a peacemaker in any realm of life, you have to be at peace with yourself. And the, the biggest threat to peace, as far as I'm concerned, is losing hope, where you just feel like giving up. And, um, and beyond that, I think it's, it's really just the kind of the little things. You see your, your kind of work as a peacemaker in just conflict resolution in very, very kind of small arenas of life that can be, you know, if you work, it's, work somewhere, you're constantly kind of involved in conflict resolution. Um, but I think on the one hand, teaching students the importance of these small acts in a kind of larger picture um, is definitely um, something that I try to, to, to teach them. But also to teach the Emerson's second statement that peace is the victory, not war. So in other words, what does it mean to win? What does it mean to win an argument? What does it mean to win you know, a conflict in any kind of venue. And I think that classrooms are really fantastic places for conflict resolution and learning skills of conflict resolution because everyone's on kind of on, on display. And, um, and especially since in my classrooms we are often reading, for example, I have a course called American Literature and World Cultures, um, which really looks at the United States, the literature of America and the New World as a kind of as an always already global society where everyone comes from somewhere else except for the, you know, some of the Native Americans. And, um, and so we, students gain an awareness of how amazingly diverse our society is, how complex it is. Um, even as they're growing up, they don't even, they take it for granted that everyone's like themselves, but in fact, we're constantly negotiating differences and perspectives. And for them to have a kind of solid historical um, awareness of this fact, I think, relaxes them and helps them to engage more overtly different literatures. So, you know, we don't think about Thoreau as, I mean, Thoreau mentions the, a Huguenot in, um, you know, in A Week on the Conquest in Merrimack Rivers. I mean, why, Thoreau was, you know, a minority, basically, in New England. We don't think of these these kind of aspects of these kind of canonical authors' identities. And, um, and so I think that it's important for students to have that, um, that experience of engaging writers, of learning about their backgrounds, and, um, and understanding that we have a very, very richly diverse um, culture that they can kind of be a part of, too. And, um, and in learning that, I think that they come to terms more with their own histories and, um, and, and kind of come to a, a, a greater sort of peace um, for themselves. I think, I mean, young people nowadays are just really, really great and really aware of the need for a better world. Um, so I think I have tremendous uh, faith in them um, on that score.